Yeah. You are out of your mind if you haven't seen some chrome type like this and just thought, wow, I need that. This is called Desert Chrome and it originated from very skilled airbrush artists back in the 80s. It's marked by that mountainous horizon, the smooth red to orange gradient of a burning hot landscape, and of course that beautiful blue sky all being reflected into that chrome. I don't know about you, but I don't have an airbrush gun and even if I did, you know, we can create this desert chrome effect and even make it 3D all inside of Photoshop. To do that, we're gonna need my chrome tone action set, which turns the extremely lengthy 3D chrome making process into just a few clicks. Let's check it out. So real quickly, I'm just gonna run through one of the actions here to show you how simple this is, and then I'll teach you all about it. So this is actually Chrome Tone version two, which I just updated today. If you had Chrome Tone before, you had Chrome Tone version one, which means you know that the most recent Photoshop update just broke it. It broke Chrome Tone, it wouldn't work anymore. Classic Adobe making things worse. So in the process of fixing it, I decided to just revamp the entire look and feel of the final result and make it a lot more customizable in the process. Here's what that looks like, and all it took was a few clicks and it's just a few more clicks to make it 3D, which is super cool. We're gonna get into this in just a second here. Now you see the magic it can do. Let's go over how you can do the same. So obviously you're gonna need Chrome Tone. You can get that on my shop for 15% off using the code YouTube15 at checkout. The link is in the description. And once you've got that downloaded, the installation is very simple. Please refer to this installation guide PDF to install the action files, the pattern files, and the gradient files. Now let's hop back into Photoshop and you should see the Chrome Tone V2 actions in your actions panel. If you don't have your actions panel on your screen, simply go up to window and then actions right here and you'll open that actions panel on your screen and you'll see we got Chrome Tone V2 here. So we got the custom Chrome actions, the 3D actions, and then all of the preset color combination Chrome actions down here. It's all laid out very simply for you. Now, before you start messing with these, I highly recommend that you run these actions on a 16 by 20 inch 300 DPI document. The most important thing being the 300 DPI. The canvas size you can play around with, but it may yield different results, which I'll get into later in this video. But I wouldn't recommend going anywhere under 4,000 by 4,000 pixels in the first place. So if you wanna avoid any problems at all, just use the document size 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI. All right, now simply type out your text or you could drag in a logo of your choice, but I'm gonna first demonstrate this on some text. We're using the Champ W90 Ultra font for this, which I have no idea where I got, which is also true for like half the fonts in my library. I think they just appeared there someday. Over in our actions panel here, we have a few options to choose from. We can run these custom Chrome actions, which is gonna give us full customizability over the colors and the feel of the Chrome. Or we can run any of these 14 preset color combinations for the Chrome down here in the preset actions category, all of which are super sexy, by the way. I'm gonna flash those on screen for you right now. And we'll go over the 3D actions in a bit as well. Let's start off with the first custom Chrome action here because it's gonna teach you how to use the action as you go. So just select your text in the layers panel and then in the actions panel, we're gonna highlight this custom Chrome and click on this play button down here. All right, the first dialogue we're gonna get is gonna let us choose the size of the bevel that we want on our Chrome. The bevel meaning the outer part of the Chrome, which I'll put on screen here for you to see. So we can change how big or small that bevel is gonna be simply by adjusting the size within the stroke options in the layer styles panel. By default, it's set to 24, which is a pretty happy medium and it looks good on pretty much any heavy or thick fonts. We can even go even thicker with the bevel here since you're using a pretty thick font. But if you're using a more decorative or thin serif, you might want to turn the bevel size down a bit. Obviously, I love my thick, chunky fonts. So we're going to set this to about 30. That seems like a good size for the bevel and we'll press OK on the layer styles here. And the next prompt is gonna let us choose the horizon that we want. So just press OK on this and you'll be prompted with this pattern fill dialog. And now we can choose the horizon that we want on this Chrome. We can also choose where we want it on this Chrome simply by clicking and dragging it around the canvas. We can change the scale of it as well. And of course, this is all seamless. You don't have to worry about any odd looking corners or breaks in the pattern. And most importantly, we can change the actual pattern itself. So if you install the Chrome Tone Patterns file correctly, you can simply click on this little box here. It'll open up the patterns dialog. We'll scroll all the way down here to see our chrome tone patterns that we installed. And here we can choose from five different seamless horizons for our chrome. Some are more mountainous than others. This one, for example, is a bit flatter and more angled. We also have this really cool pattern here, which is like a sinusoidal wave, which looks really cool and stylized, especially if you play with the scale. For example, if I set this to 100, I can get a nice drooping curve across this whole text here, which is really cool. We can also go for a more mountainous look with this pattern over here. Get some nice tall mountains in here. 
For now, I'm just going to go with the default pattern that I set at, which is the first horizon. And I'll set the scale of this to 50 and just drag that where I want it on the text. So now I have the horizon sort of clipping across the middle of our type here, which is exactly what I want. And this piece of type in specific is pretty vertically like compressed. It's not too long. But let's say I was using a vertically longer piece of type. We want to make sure that wherever we place the horizon, the bottom half of that type where the horizon is covering is fully covered by black. So I'm going to set that back to 50 and place it how I want it. And we'll just press OK on this. OK, and now this next step is very important. After you choose your horizon and place that wherever you want it, you're going to be prompted with this layer styles dialog again. And it's kind of an odd setup here, but all you have to do is click and drag up and down on your canvas until you can see this red line appear on your text. So once you see this red line, all you have to do is drag it just above the peak of the horizon on the type. So the highest point of the horizon is probably right around here on this M or on this H or something. We want to drag it just slightly over the top or the highest part of that horizon on this type. What we don't want to do is have that red line creep anywhere into the horizon. So again, just make sure you drag it just barely over the highest peak of your horizon. It's okay if it peeks out a little bit into these tiny parts here, but mainly just make sure you can't really see it too much. And basically that's just going to make sure that the gradient gets applied on this correctly. You definitely don't want to skip that step that is very important. So once you've done that, just press OK on this layer styles dialog. And next up, we'll be prompted to choose the color combination or the gradient map that we want on the base of this chrome. By default, it's this desert chrome gradient map. We can click on this little bar here to go into the gradient editor. And from here, we can either edit any of the colors to our liking or more aptly, we can go down to the Chrome Tone V2 Gradients group in our gradient presets, open up that folder, and now we can choose from any of the base gradients here in this group. As you can see, we have quite a few options, and you can really do whatever kind of combination you want with these presets. You can even go into any of them and change the colors to whatever you like. So this is if you want to experiment with the color combinations aside from the preset color combinations that I have in these preset actions over here in the Actions panel, or if you want to make your own color combinations by editing any of the colors in the preset gradient maps. For right now, I'm just going to keep this on this default desert chrome look. I'll press OK on that and I'll press OK on the gradient map. And now we are prompted with the gradient map we want to use on the bevel of this chrome here. So that's the outer part of the chrome. Again, we can click on this bar here to open up the gradient editor and edit these colors to our liking or use any of the presets in the chrome tone V2 gradients the bevel gradients group right here. Again, there's a ton of custom presets to use, all of which are really, really cool. And I encourage you to experiment with this and find some interesting color combinations to use on your Chrome effects. I'm going to go ahead and just use the default Chrome here. And now we're prompted with another layer styles panel after I click continue on this. And this is really only if you want to fine tune the effect. If you don't want to mess too much with the fine tuning, you could just skip this by pressing OK on the layer styles. But just to show you what this does here, when this pops up, you want to go into the gradient overlay style in the layer styles panel here. And this is going to control the reflection on the bevel here. So the main slider you want to play with is the opacity. You see, if we turn that up, we get a harsher reflection on the bevel of the chrome. Or if we turn that down, we get a less harsh or less visible reflection on the bevel part of the chrome. We can also move that reflection around by clicking and dragging it on our canvas to anywhere we want on our piece of text. And this is just more of a stylized look. So I wanted to add that option in here just in case you wanted to customize this. So let's say I do want some pretty strong reflections all around the bevel of this chrome that I'll make sure I turn the opacity up Right now it's at 19%. I believe the default is 10 or 15%. So yeah, if I wanted that stronger, all I would do is turn that up. Around 20 is pretty nice. I wouldn't really go any higher than that. So I'm just going to drag that wherever I want it on the Chrome. As you can see, it's not actually filling out the whole piece of Chrome text here. Just in case you do want to do that, you can go ahead and duplicate this gradient overlay layer style by clicking on the plus here and then dragging that second one over by clicking and dragging on your canvas. And you can place that wherever it needs to be on the text. So again, I just put this in here if you want some extra customizability, but if not, you could just ignore this entirely and press OK once you get this prompt come up in your action. So I'm done playing with this here. I'm going to press OK on this and now we're almost done. Let's set the intensity of the glow in the next dialog here. These settings are pretty fine by default, so I'm just going to click OK on this here. And now I can set the tint or the color of the glow in the next dialog by adjusting the levels of the color balance here. So say if I wanted this more blue or cyan, I'll just drag the cyan 
or blue sliders up. Or if I wanted this more yellow and orangey, I would drag the slider towards the yellow and towards the red over here as well. So a pretty nice and easy way to customize the color on your glow. I'll press OK on this here. And now we're done with the action. And you cannot tell me that that doesn't just look absolutely beautiful. So the action generates this little group down here for us to open up and play around with some of these parameters. So by default, we have a grain overlay on this, which I just added for some extra spice. If you don't want the grain, you could just turn this off. Or if you want more grain, you could simply turn up the opacity on this layer to really put that grain into your chrome, which is a nice look. I like it. It makes it look a little bit more rough. But for now, I'm just going to keep that back at the default value of 20. We can also adjust the glow here, say if it's too bright or too dark. We can mess with the opacity here to make it brighter or darker. Or let's say I want double the glow. I could just duplicate this with Command J and get more glow on here. Pretty modular setup. We can also go back and change the color of the glow simply by clicking on the color balance smart filter on the glow layer and just adjusting the colors to whatever we want. So yeah, really simple stuff, easy to get the hang of. And the result, of course, is just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now let's make this 3D, which we could do in about 30 seconds using these 3D actions in the actions panel over here. The first one you'll be running is this 3D prepare action, which does exactly what the name suggests, which is prepare your Chrome for that 3D effect. Before we run that action, we want to make sure that the layer we have selected is this chrome tone layer inside of the chrome tone group. So again, make sure that you have this chrome tone layer selected inside of the chrome tone group. And once you have that selected, you can go ahead and run the 3D prepare action. So go ahead and click play on that. Press continue here. Press continue here. And now our layers are set up for that 3D effect. And all you have to do from here is don't touch the layers panel at all yet. We want to now run any of these extrude actions in the actions panel over here. So we can extrude our text in the direction of our choosing. We can extrude it down, up or back. Now let's run the extrude down action. We'll click play on that. And that has extruded our text downwards. And we can actually run this action as many times as we want to get this extrusion as long as we want it. So I'm going to run this one more time to get this about double the length of the extrusion. And now since we're at the desired length of the extrusion, all I'm going to do is scroll all the way back up here and click on the three. 3D extrusion group. So you want to make sure that you have the 3D extrusion group selected in your layers panel and then go over to your actions panel, click on 3D finalize and then click on play. And that's going to obviously finalize that 3D look. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. We're going to be prompted with this layer styles panel, which most of the time you won't have to mess with. But if you do want some more customizability within the 3D effect, you can go in here in the bevel and emboss section of the layer style and mess with the angle of the emboss or turn up or down the intensity or opacity of the highlights and shadows. Typically by default, these settings will be fine. You don't have to mess with any of this. But let's say the light on your 3D was too harsh or maybe the light is not hitting where you want it to. I can turn down the intensity of the highlights by turning down the opacity of this highlight mode right here within the shading category of the bevel and emboss layer style. And say if I was extruding this up instead of downwards, maybe I want the light to hit from the top here in this direction rather than from the bottom. And to do that, all I'd have to do is mess with the little interface for the angle and altitude of the light here. I'm not going to mess with that right now because these settings by default are pretty fine. So I'm going to press OK on this and that's going to run and finalize the 3D here and get it looking right. And now, bam, look at that. That is pretty damn cool. You might want to do some minor adjustments to the extrusion layer. Say if this is a little bit too saturated, I could just do command U on my keyboard and mess with the saturation here or even the hue if I want to change the color of this entirely or maybe just change it ever so slightly. We do have that option just by doing command U on our keyboard here. But yeah, this is looking great. It's honestly pretty crazy to be able to do this in Photoshop. Obviously, there's not as much control in Photoshop as there would be in an actual 3D program or even Illustrator 3D, but the results are still pretty damn good most of the time. Like, I honestly wouldn't believe this came from Photoshop if I didn't know. So that's the custom Chrome action with the 3D applied to it. I'm super happy with these results. And so this is just using the default desert Chrome gradient maps. But like I said, you can choose from any one of these 14 preset actions for a different color combination in your Chrome. Some of my favorites are the desert Chrome obviously the pure chrome the 80s chrome the gold is really cool too hot sunset is also really cool it looks like the dirt album cover from alice in chains those are some of my favorites but all of these presets are really cool i spent a good amount of time trying to find some nice harmonic color combinations for the chrome so definitely give any of these a shot but yeah i mean just look at this chrome man that's sexy. All right, and that's Chrome Tone. That's the gist of it. As you saw, it's really straightforward to use. It really is that simple, but we do know 
how tricky Photoshop can be. So now I'm gonna go over some potential questions and scenarios you might run into as you use Chrome to number one. What is this experimental Chrome and legacy custom Chrome action doing here? So for the experimental Chrome, it's pretty much the same thing as the first custom Chrome action. The only thing that's different is the horizon is a bit more experimental. It's just funkier and it really looks cool on thicker type like this, which is why I included it in the first place. So just real quickly, I'm gonna run this and show you that it's pretty much the same scenario. The only difference is that in a second and you'll see here, we get prompted with a threshold slider midway. And as we move along this threshold slider, we get the option to keep the horizon sort of how it was, or we can add some really cool distortion and reflection into that horizon. So the more we turn up this threshold slider, the more we get that sort of rounding and curving within the type and the horizon on it. So it's just a little bit of a funkier look compared to the original custom Chrome action. Again, here we're prompted with that gradient overlay. Just wanna get that red line over the topmost part of the peak of this here. Make sure we're not really seeing that red line anywhere. And once we run through all the colors and all of that, this is the final result, which is pretty similar to the other result that we got. The main difference being that the horizon is now a bit more funky and now sort of bending to the contours of the type. As for the legacy custom Chrome action, this will generate the legacy look of Chrome Tone. So version one, which came out about a year ago and has been the main version up until today when I upload this video and update the product. So here's what that legacy Chrome action looks like. And here is what the updated Chrome looks like pretty stark difference between the two. And I think this update really blew it out the water and really improved on that desert chrome look. But obviously it is all personal preference. So that is why I did include the legacy custom chrome action in case you did want the legacy or the original version. All right, question number two, why do I recommend using the document size 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI? for Chrome Tone. So 300 DPI is non-negotiable. Just use 300 DPI, make it easy for you and me. However, the width and height of the document is sort of malleable, but there is something you wanna keep in mind if you're gonna use a different width and height uh, for your document. So I have an eight by eight inch document open here, which is just below half of the size of the document size that I recommend. This is an eight by eight inch document at 300 DPI. I'm gonna run the custom Chrome action here really quick and show you why I recommend using the 16 by 20 inch document. And so the main thing is actually going to be the horizon and the gradient on the horizon. So the actual horizon is fine. You could place this and scale this as normal. I'll just set this to 50 and place it around here. Press OK on that. But when you're prompted with the layer styles panel, which I am going to be now, you can see that when I start dragging the gradient overlay here, it's the same process as when I was in the bigger document. But the red line here, I don't know if you can tell, is a lot thinner. That means that this entire gradient actually is a lot smaller and thinner and pretty much just compressed compared to when we did it on the larger document. And that could result in some funky looking gradients uh, for the final result of this Chrome. But we can easily fix this just by turning up the actual scale of the gradients in the layer style options here. So if I just turn the scale up a little bit, you can see that red line starts to get thicker and closer to what it looks like in the bigger document. And this is just gonna be something you have to experiment with. But for you, for just a general rule of thumb, if you're in a document size that is less than the recommended 16 by 20 inches, go ahead and turn the scale on the gradient overlay up. I'm gonna go with about 40 here, but keep in mind the smaller the document, the bigger you're probably gonna have to make this. But anyway, now we can start dragging this red line right above the peak of the horizon here. And now the gradient should be fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Here's a good display of how that gradient scale here affects the final image. So if I turn this up or turn this down, you can see just how compressed the gradient gets. Also, here's what happens if you don't put that red line above the horizon. We get this really ugly result. We don't want that. Make sure you put that red line just above the peak of the horizon. Okay guys, that is a wrap. It's actually not a wrap. I have one more thing to say. So in your Chrome Tone order, I've included this need some help PDF which just links to this webpage right here, which is where I'm gonna host all the pretty much support for Chrome Tone, and matter of fact, any other product. So in this document, which I'm calling the cheat sheet, this is where I'm gonna document any errors that people come along with any of my products, and I'm gonna document the solutions um, for those errors. I'm also just gonna include any tips and tricks that I have for that product, and I'm just going to be adding to this list over time. So yeah, definitely take advantage of support.tron.supply. I hope you enjoyed staring at some beautiful retro chrome for the last 20 or so minutes of your life. Chrome Tone is available at duronsupply.com for 15% off using the code YouTube15. Go ahead and snag that now, you won't regret it. I personally have used Chrome Tone on a ton of different projects and I just recently got some approvals for some very big artists with Chrome Tone, so I'm excited to share those.
course. So it definitely gets the job done and the people will love it. Your clients will love it. It just looks fucking good. All right, go snag Chrome Tone. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.